All right, here we go. This is problem number 30 from chapter 6 of the Holiday and Resnick textbook. Uh, this is on your worksheet 6.1b. Uh, so we've got this toy chest uh, with some stuff in it, and it has a total weight of 180 newtons. Um, so it's probably worth taking a minute to find the mass of that. So our force of gravity is 180 newtons. That means that the mass, by dividing by 9.8, we can find out that the mass of that thing is going to be 18.4 kilograms. Let's sort of put that on our drawing here. How about that? Mass equals 18.4 kilograms. Cool. All right. Um, we know that the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.42, and the child in the figure is attempting to move the chest across the floor by pulling it uh, with this rope over here. And it tells us that the rope makes an angle of 42 degrees. So the question is, what's the magnitude of the force? Uh, that he has to exert to put it on the verge of moving. In other words, just to kind of get it moving. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make a new free body diagram. Here's our crate. Uh, I know that the mass is 18.4 kilograms, which I guess actually I don't need anywhere, but uh, I don't know, just to be thorough. So let's see. So our force of gravity is going to be negative 180 newtons, right? Because gravity is pulling down. Now, the kid is going to pull this way with some amount of force. So we'll call that the force from the kid. Uh, now, that force is going to have a horizontal component, force of the kid in the x direction, and it's going to have a vertical component, force of the kid in the y direction. So let's go ahead and put those on our drawings. Here's the force of the kid in the x direction, force of the kid in the y direction. Now we can write expressions for those, even though we don't know what uh, the force of the kid is. Well, I guess we're just using f for force of the kid. Well, there we go. Okay, <laughs> um, so sorry. The problem calls f. The force of the kid just F, and I have decided to call it FK. Um, all right, so anyway, so the force of the kid in the X direction is just going to be, you know, the force of the kid times the cosine of 42 degrees. And the force of the kid in the Y direction is going to be the force of the kid times the sine of 42 degrees, just by doing some trig. So that means that my normal force here needs to fill in the difference, right? So it's going to be 180 newtons from gravity minus whatever the kid is taking off of it. K times sine of 42 degrees. All right. Now, if it's just on the verge of moving, that means that this force over here is our static friction max. And we know that that static friction max should be our coefficient of friction times this normal force. So that's going to be 0.42 times 180 minus, oops. times the force of the kid, times the sine of 42 degrees. All right, so uh, basically all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my horizontal force, net force, and set it equal to zero, all right? So let's do that and see what we get. So we know that the force of the kid times the cosine of 42 degrees has got to equal 0.42, this is our maximum static friction, right, since it's on the verge of moving. All right, so we know everything in here except for uh, the force of the kid. So if you do some algebra on this, I'm going to kind of skip ahead a couple steps here, but you end up getting this. The force of the kid times the cosine of 42 plus, is that right? Are both my coefficient and my angle both 42? Well, that's annoying. Why did they do that? All right, well, so, uh, times the sine of 42, so if you do some algebra, you'll get this, has got to be equal to 75.6, so I divide both sides, and the force of the kid ends up being uh, 74 newtons, have to round down to your significant digits. All right, so obviously I skipped some algebra there that you should be able to manage. All right, now. Question B says, write an expression for the magnitude of f required to put the chest on the verge of moving as a function of the angle. Well, it's the exact same thing that we just did here, um, except your theta is going to change, right? So B is just this. The force of the kid is going to be, just replace your 42 degrees with a generic theta, right? Um, can we, in fact, do that? Yes, we can. Yeah, because this 75.6 here doesn't depend on that angle. 
So it's just going to be 75.6 divided by cosine of theta plus the coefficient times the sine of theta. All right, so then finally we've got to do part C here, where we've got to determine the value of theta for which uh, the force of the kit is a minimum and find the minimum. So, um, oh shoot, this thing got moved. There we go, that was supposed to be over there. Okay, so um, we are trying to minimize the force of the kit, right? So that means take a derivative, right? So we want to find the derivative of the force of the kit with respect to theta. So that's the derivative with respect to theta of 75.6 over cosine of theta plus coefficient of static friction, which was um, 0.42, right? Times the sine of theta, right? Okay, so this is ugly. Um, we had to use the quotient rule, unfortunately, here. Um, Is that how I did it? Oh, no, you know what I actually did is I wrote this as, oops, I wrote this as messy. It should not be an equal sign here. This should be this. All right, so you can use the quotient rule. What I actually ended up doing was this, and I actually like this better. I almost never use the quotient rule. I pretty much just stick to writing stuff as uh, negative exponents. So this becomes 75.6 times cosine of theta plus 0 0.42 times the sine of theta all to the negative 1. So take your derivative. Um, oops. Take the derivative, so we're going to multiply. you got to bring the exponent down, so you get negative 1 times 75.6 times the cosine of theta plus 0 0.42 sine theta to the negative 2 times, I'm out of room, so I'm going to just kind of go down another line. So this is times dot 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 times the derivative of the inside, right? And so derivative of cosine is what sine? Um, sorry, derivative of cosine is negative sine. So you get negative sine theta um, and then um, plus the derivative of sine is cosine, so 0 0.42 cosine theta. So, let's simplify this mess. Holy cow, sorry, my board work is kind of a mess here. So you end up getting, uh, all of this stuff here is on the bottom, right? So on the bottom, we're going to have cosine theta plus 0 0.42 sine theta squared. That's on the bottom. And then on the top of the fraction, you've got negative 1 times 75.6 times this mess. So I'm just going to multiply the negative 1 here by this. Um, so you get 75.6 times sine of theta minus 0 0.42 cosine theta. All right, so there's our derivative. So now we just want to set it equal to 0, right? So the only way that this fraction can equal 0 is if the top of the fraction is 0. So we end up with sine of theta minus 0 0.42 cosine of theta equals 0. So add cosine theta to both sides. So I just did one in class like this today, at least at the time of recording this. All right, so anytime you're trying to solve something like this for theta, you got to get it so there's just one trig function. So the easiest thing to do is divide both sides by cosine, and then sine over cosine just tangent, right? So you get tangent of theta equals 0 0.42, and then solve for your theta. So your theta, then if you do inverse tangent, it ends up giving you pretty close to 23 degrees. All right, so that's going to be our answer. Um, and then if you, you know, just plug that back in to this original formula, it'll give you the force of the kid. It turns out to be about 70 newtons. And then finally, to determine that it is in fact, a minimum, you got to take another derivative. Um, so I'm not going to go through the calculations here, but if you do take a derivative, another derivative of this mess here, uh, and then plug in 23 degrees, uh, you end up getting a negative value, which tells you that it's a minimum, right? Negative second derivative means the slope of your original function is decreasing. Um, so that means it's got to be 
a max? Wait a minute, I just said that wrong. Mm. Sorry, no, it gives you a positive value. Your second derivative gives you a positive value. So, which means that the slope is increasing, which means that it's a minimum. All right, so there we go. That's how you do that, guys.